Birth of Maths GCSE Level 2 Qualification Trigonometry and a right angle triangle Standard fare um, Admittedly this is the one where you've got to find the hypotenuse which is a little bit trickier You've got to be a little bit careful now um, First thing we need to know is the equations for trigonometry So we've got Sokotoa Sokotoa um, these could be written out as formula triangles if you if you like some formula triangles but at this sort of level we really need to be able to manipulate the algebra and not maybe build up our techniques for algebra rather than relying on um, crutches such as formula triangles you can use them if you like them um, and it will actually make finding y a little bit easier um, but we should be able to deal with this without those so what have we got here we've got the opposite well we've got the hypotenuse We've got the opposite side and we've got the adjacent side. Okay, as always, those are relative to the angle that we're given. So we're given this angle, the opposite side to that angle. The adjacent side is the one next to it that's not the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is the one opposite the right angle, the longest side. So we are using the hypotenuse and the opposite, so that is the sine formula. So the formula in full is sine of the angle, x equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Now usually in this sort of question you get one mark for just picking out the right formula. Let's put the numbers we've got. So we've got the sine of 28 degrees equals the opposite which is 7 divided by the hypotenuse which is y. And this is what makes this tricky because most trigonometric questions we end up multiplying the number by the, the trig that trigger the angle so sine 28 or cos 28. But this is the one that is different when you have the, the unknown on the bottom of the equation, which makes things tricky. Now we could go through a process where we multiply by the y to get y times sine 28 and then divide by sine 28 to get y equals 7 over sine 28. Or there's a nice little rule that you can use that's very useful to do with um, fractions across an equation. So when you've got fractions across an um, one fraction is equal to another fraction, even if that fraction doesn't look like a fraction, so it's just a number, if we put it over 1 that makes it a fraction. We can just swap the diagonals over and it does not affect the equation, because it has that sort of effect. If I'm times it by y and then dividing by sine 28, that's what that, that, that is effectively doing when I swap the diagonal. So it, I, I could swap the 1 and the 7 around, uh, I can swap the y and the sine 28. So if I swap these two over, I get y equals, or y over 1, which is just y equals 7 over sine 28. Now if you had used the formula triangle, written the formula triangle out straight away, it would have given you the opposite over the angle, um, is what y equals, but um, it's better to be picking up these general algebra techniques rather than relying on a crutch such as uh, a specific formula triangle. Okay, now we need a calculator to work this out, so... Um, 7 divided by uh, the sine of 28. Now we could write that as a fraction, but it's going to use the divide button. We get 14 point, oh, lost it, 14.9. Um, all answers, if they're not asked for, should, you really should give to three significant figures. So you look at the first three digits and rounding it to that third one. There we go, 14.9 kilometers.